I want to go through the difference between recursion and iteration in this video. I'm assuming you know a bit about both already, but I think comparing them side by side and spending some time talking about both is important because they're very similar in essence, but actually are just different concepts in computer science. So there are different concepts. Um, recursion is where we are calling, where we've got a subroutine, which is calling itself. And so that subroutine is repeating in a sense. Whereas iterations where we're repeating a particular block of code. So on the surface, they're both very similar, but they are different approaches to solving a problem. So one thing which is important to note is every recursive solution can be converted to an iterative solution and vice versa. So there are two approaches to solve the same problem. Some problems fit really well with recursion some fit really well with iteration. And so if you try to convert to the other approach, it might be a bit of a nightmare, but you could in theory. Now, just to show you an example, which I've used before, and is it just a classic in this, which is about factorials. On the left is a recursive solution, and on the right is an iterative solution. Both do the exact same thing. Both will give you the factorial of a number, but approach it in a different way. So as we, as we run both bits of code, we are going to have repeats. The code is going to repeat, just the order is different. The actual repeat in the iterative version is just inside this for loop, whereas the repeat in the recursion is just for the fact that we are calling and then returning from different instances of the same subroutine. So it's not quite the same aspect of repetition, although the similarity is that we are repeating the same bits of code multiple times. Now both do the same job, it is down to personal preference, which one you'd want in this particular case. I personally prefer the recursive solution because in my mind, it fits a lot better with the mathematical definition. When you see the maths definition, as I showed in a previous video, you can clearly see how this code implements those mathematical rules. Whereas a four loop on the right, to a mathematician, they might not fully understand what's going on in this particular bit of code. Whereas you'd hope they would at least get the sense of what you're doing on the left-hand side. But ultimately, the difference is they're approaching a problem from different angles. A lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, iterative solutions will start small and build their way up. So you'll start at the kind of smallest area of your problem and just work your way up until you have your solution. So really a bottom-up approach. With factorials, my code here starts with i being one and the for loop increments and gets bigger and bigger until we reach n and we're just multiplying this kind of cumulative product as we go. I could have done it the other way around, but I've, it tends to work better with iteration if you start small. Whereas recursion, I found, tends to work better if you start big and then use your general cases to break it down into smaller and smaller problems. So the way the code on the left would work is, well, we pass in our argument for factorial and instead of a solution kind of working its way up towards it, it's going to start calling itself with smaller versions of n and that constantly calls itself and calls itself and calls itself with smaller and smaller and smaller versions of n until we reach n is one and we reach our base case. So we're starting big and break it down again and again and again until we reach a simple base case or base cases. It works really well for divide and conquer problems. So for instance, merge sort is a really good example of a usually recursive solution. The way merge sort works on lists is it'll divide the list again and again and again and again until you've got a list of one item only and then slowly pair by pair it's going to sort each pair until the list is rebuilt in a sorted way and because that's breaking it down going top down it's a good example of how recursion can fit in really well if you have a look at an iterative solution for merge sort which is bottom up I think it's much more confusing because it kind of goes against the nature of what merge sort is doing. Merge sort is trying to break down a problem and so it fits better, in my view, with recursion than iteration. But ultimately both do the same job, it's just what approach you're taking to solve it. So if I can just do a few more comparison points because I think just to be as explicit as we can is, is important. So if you're looking at code and you want to figure out if it's recursive or iterative, well, if it's recursive, it's when you can see a subroutine, a functional procedural method, calling itself. Whereas if it's just using for loops, while loops, repeat until loops, do while loops, any other version of those, it is using an iterative approach. And you might have a combination sometimes, 
but within a recursive subroutine, really it should not have any iteration. Both have problems, of course. Recursive solutions can run infinitely. I've put that in quotes because it's not truly infinite. It's gonna crash eventually. And it can be this infinite case where you don't actually have a general case which moves you towards the stopping condition. You've got to have a situation where every call of itself moves you closer towards that base case which will stop the recursion. So it will be infinite if you haven't got a well-defined base case, but in reality it's gonna crash, it's gonna run out of space, you'll have a stack overflow where it just hasn't got memory to deal with all of these pending subroutine calls. And loops, as you well know, I'm sure, can also be infinite, not for loops, but while and repeat until loops, which are indefinite, could be infinite. Again, I've used that in quotes because it's not truly infinite, of course, it's gonna crash eventually or you're gonna to have to cancel it eventually. Um, it can be infinite if your condition never changes and if you don't use a construct like break, which ends it early. The difference being, I suppose, recursive is a bit more dangerous if it runs infinitely because it's gonna crash and it can be quite a serious crash in, in certain cases. Whereas iteration, it's gonna crash eventually, but most of the time it's just wasting your CPU. It's just doing stuff for no good reason. In terms of positives, recursive solutions can, and I would say are often more concise and readable than iterative solutions. In particular, if the problem lends itself to a divide and conquer approach. Something like merge sort fits really well with recursion and so its solution is more concise than the iterative version. Of course, you could write some awful code for recursion, but if it's done well, it can be really short and really readable. But often, iterative solutions are faster to run, mostly because of the nature of subroutine calls. When you call a subroutine, it's got to put a stack frame on the call stack. It's got to save its parameters, return address, and any local variables. It's got to allocate some memory for it. That's an overhead, it takes time to allocate that memory, it takes time to save those values. And when the subroutine finishes, it's got to then pop that frame off the stack, then resume execution somewhere else. That kind of shuffling around takes up time and is what we describe as an overhead. An overhead is where you're using up some time or some resource in order to do another task. So it's sort of a side effect of doing a task. It takes up some of your processor time. Some of the examples I've shown in previous videos have only resulted in, you know, a few recursive calls, but for bigger numbers, they could result in hundreds, if not thousands, if not more recursive calls, which takes up memory as well. So another drawback of recursion is generally they take up more memory because we're having to store a lot on our call stack for complicated recursive programs and when you're dealing with quite big numbers. So can be quite intensive on memory, even if the solution on paper or on the screen looks quite elegant. It can take up a lot behind the scenes. But don't let that put you off using recursion. If it fits with your problem well and it's a more logical way to code it, go for it because it's, it's quite a nice way to program.